Remote work means that you can work whenever you like, wherever you like, right? Right? Welcome. This is Virtual Coffee Chat with Lewis. That's me for Think Remote. Let's have that first nice sip of the day. Mm. Nice. I actually cheated. This is not a mug of coffee. This is a double espresso. I rather like my espresso. And yes, before you ask, it's still hard to get a haircut in Portugal. You know, COVID-19 things. But let's talk about what matters. That's remote work. And let's talk about schedule and how flexible schedules are with remote work. Expect maybe they're a little bit too flexible. Let's talk about what that means. Now, I love where I, well, where I work at, and I think we have some pretty good policies. Now, when people ask me about scheduling, I say that we have flexible schedule, the flexible scheduling, but we, we expect uh, eight hours of productivity. And why do I say this specifically? Well, because the reality is that when you approach work as a, oh, it's flexible. So that means that I'll do work whenever I feel like it or whenever I can fit it into my day, you're going to have a bad time. And the people you work for are not probably not going to be very happy with you. Let me explain why. Uh, as human beings, we are really, 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 really bad at estimating. I mean, haven't you ever had a, an exam that you crammed for last minute and then you figure out that, oh, I, I, there's no way I can study everything that's relevant at the last minute or a group work or something like that, right? Remember back the, in those days of school. Now, maybe you were more responsible than me and, that mo and then most of my friends, but I'm willing to bet that at least a decent percentage of you know what that feels like. So when work is flexible, and when a company assumes a completely flexible, a completely flexible stand, that usually means that, that people uh, procrastinate until the last minute and then run up. And then when things need to get done, they, they run around like headless chickens and that's not optimal. Now, I still think that work-life balance should be a priority and that you should work when the best, when it's the best time for you, when you feel the most productive, that's what I do. But I, I still account. What I do is I still account on my calendar. I still block an eight-hour period for work, right? And I recommend people do that because the reality is that most of us aren't going to be superhumanly productive just because we work at the best hours for us. Or the, the opposite, right? Just because we don't get to work at the perfect time, we're not going to be terribly unproductive. So uh, here's the plan. The thing that I do now, do I work eight hours a day every day? No. Some days I work eight hours. Some days I work 12. Most days I would chalk my actual productivity to something to four and six hours. But it's still important to have that blocked time off for work, because what that allows us to do, if, if I block those eight hours in my calendar and I assign those hours to work, that gives me leeway for, you know, unproductive periods. That gives me leeway for uh, things that I couldn't predict, like emergencies like that, that. And that's what flexibility means. Flexibility means that even though I've committed to work that full work day, those eight hours, my wife's car can break down and I can say, oh, no problem. Uh, 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 let's, I'll, I'll, I'll take you, let's use, my, let's use my car or, you know, something comes up, right? My, my mother comes to visit and I can spend some nice time with my mom, right? Uh, that's, that's what flexibility, that's what flexibility ultimately means. Um, I'm a writer, I've written a couple of books it's not a lot, I know, but you know, it's, it's something. And uh, if you go at it, let me tell you, if you go at it with the mentality of, well, I'm going to write whenever I feel like writing, right? Whenever I really feel that the muse inspires me and all of that, I'm sorry to say, you're probably not ever going to write anything meaningful or significant because you need to show up before the muse does. And it's the same with work. 
so that's the main point why I, I wanted to have this little coffee chat today, because it, it's nice to think that, oh, the next step in remote work is, you know, unicorns and rainbows, and you work whenever you feel that's optimal. But I, uh, let's face it, even if you love your work, some days work is just work. So I would caution you against taking a completely flexible approach to work, right? Set a time for starting work and set a time for finishing work. And, you know, that doesn't even have to be eight hours, though I, I do think that most people, you know, most people need to block off an eight hour period. I certainly do in order to achieve, you know, what, what's, what's expected in a normal productive day. But the, the reality is that it's a guideline. You shouldn't be a slave to your calendar. The calendar is a tool. And because we human beings are very bad at estimating the time that, that the task takes to be done, it's good to have that, that basic metric of eight hours. And then, you know, if you get your work done in four hours, then great, right? Take the rest of the day off, right? That there's no, you don't need to slavishly be at your desk as if it would be in the office. That's the good part about remote. But just don't take that approach where you think that, oh, I'm going to fit in. I'm, a, I'm at home. I have tons of things to do, and I'm going to fit up to fit work in between. In my experience, that in between space tends to poof, disappear. So anyway, those are my two cents on, on flexibility. I'm not, you know, super in love with the eight-hour workday mostly because I believe that no one really works, it puts eight hours of productivity into eight hours of work, but it's a pretty good metric. Uh, it's a pretty good metric just to have as a guideline to bookend the beginning of your day and the end of your, and the end of your work day. And then, you know, you, you fit what it, during that period that's for work, maybe you can fit other things in between and that's wonderful, but you really should commit to a nice chunky time block of your day to work. And then, you know, that time block itself should be managed right into creative time, management time, et cetera, et cetera. But that's a topic for a whole nother uh, morning coffee. I hope that you enjoyed this virtual cafe chat with Louis. That's me for Think Remote. Stay tuned. Uh, I do believe that these are the, this is the last or the last couple of days where you can subscribe at Think Remote uh, to qualify for winning a nice, nice uh, standing desk prize. So if you haven't and if you're looking at this video on the day of release, go there and check it out and the winners will be out soon. See you tomorrow.